My name is Aaron Critch, and we're very excited to demonstrate today our technique for medial meniscus transtibial root repair. So there are a few features of this guide which really make the procedure more safe and more efficient. So one is the shape. When you look here, there's a cutout uh, to go underneath the femoral condyle, so this is very low profile. It's designed to work in tight spaces. A second feature that we like is the ability to have variable angle. So this is spring-loaded on the back, and you can rotate 40 degrees in either direction. Traditionally, when you used an ACL guide for medial meniscus root repair, the problem was the guide would often torque. So in order to get your spot in the knee and to line up on the anteromedial face of the tibia, you had to torque through the guide. And what happened is you missed with your guide pin in the back. And best case scenario, you missed anatomically in the bone, but worst case scenario, you can miss in the back of the knee where there are important neurovascular structures. So we'll show you on this knee today how this variable angle can be very helpful and beneficial. Lastly, I'd like to point out this is designed to have a little bit higher angle of entry. So you can notice that we're coming in almost perpendicular to the subchondral surface. So there's two advantages to this. One is if you use an ACL guide, you're going to come in at a very shallow angle, and you're actually going to undermine the subchondral bone when you're drilling. The second advantage here is that we're often doing combined procedures, whether it's an ACL reconstruction. So the higher angle allows you to be collinear with your ACL tunnel or socket, which reduces the risk of coalescence in the tibial bone. We have a right knee here, and we're looking through standard portals. We have our camera in the anterolateral portal, and I have a probe through the anteromedial portal. And this is probably a typical root patient. You can see some chondral damage of the condyle and the tibia. And then at the meniscus here, you can see a medial meniscus root. So this is a radial tear near the root that we've created in this cadaveric specimen. So I think there's a few important visualization tips because you can't fix what you can't see. So what we've done is we've lengthened the MCL. So we've taken a spinal needle and pie-crusted the femoral side of the MCL at about 20 degrees of knee flexion and valgus. So you can see we have a little bit more opening here than normal. We're not trying to create a grade 3, but maybe a grade 2 MCL opening. A couple of other things we've done is I've taken the power rasp, and you can see I've taken down the medial tibial spine. So I think this does a few things for you. One is it provides some visualization to the back. Number two is it provides some bleeding bone and biology. And then number three, it helps your guide sit just a little bit flatter so you don't have that big upslope of the tibial spine. We've then removed a little bit of this PCL synovium. And then here we've taken just a little bit uh, for reverse notch plasty. This isn't often necessary with the Arthrex tools that we're using for this case, but something you can keep in mind if you have an osteophyte or tight space. But all of these measures really give you a nice view and allow us to safely perform our work. So we're going to introduce the point-to-point -point transtibial root guide. And you can see for this right knee, we're going to go from the medial portal to the anteromedial face of the tibia. So I've actually rotated this, you can see 40 degrees to the right. And I'll show you when we introduce this into the knee what happens with that. So here, again, that laser line really helps visualization. You can see our point, and then you can see the anatomic remnant or the origin of exactly where we want this root to be. So with the point, we simply are going to find our spot. And you can see how removing a little bit of that tibial spine, the guide sits nice and flat. And with the ability to rotate, we can really achieve our target on the anteromedial face of the tibia without creating torque. If we didn't have that rotation, you'd really be torquing the guide. But here, the guide stays nice and flat in the joint. And we're able to advance our guide just to see where we are on the skin. You want to be about a finger breadth medial to the tibia tubercle. Um, in cases where you have combined procedures, such as an ACL, we'll be obviously aware and trying to avoid coalescence, but in this case, we'll just plan a small incision, just one finger breadth medial to the tibial tubercle. So one of the great advantages of this transtibial root guide is when we're performing concomitant procedures, what's nice is as the surgeon, you have complete you know, degrees of freedom. So if you want to avoid your ACL tibial tunnel, you can certainly do that. If you have an uncommon case of both a medial and a lateral, you can really change your angle, change your position, really avoid that tibial coalescence without having to compromise the anatomic origin of your root. 
So we'll just line this up. Uh, we'll just make a small incision here on the skin. And again, the goal with this guide is we really want that point-to-point -point accuracy. So we're going to double check to make sure in the joint that we're exactly where we need to be. And then with the ratcheted guide, what we'll do is we'll actually just tap that fully down. So we have that nice point-to-point -point fixation. Good. So now you can really see that laser line. We're exactly where we want in terms of our anatomic target. So now we'll have our assistant introduce the flip cutter into the joint. And we'll feel for that first cortex, and then we'll really feel that second cortex. And then our flip cutter will hit the undersurface of our point on the guide. Perfect. So we've beautifully hit our target there. I'll just show you here. It's right underneath, so we're in an absolutely perfect spot. So I think if, if you're confident that you've hit your target, which this guide does, then at this point, we can really remove the guide and decorticate to make our socket to create some biology. And you can already see, even in this cadaveric specimen, how you can see a little bit of these osseous elements here. So then we're just going to slowly introduce the flip cutter. And you can see that really hits our target well. And we've got great visualization back here. So now, under the direct visualization of our flip cutter, we're going to open that up. And then here, we're just going to go about five or so millimeters in. We really want to decorticate that bone. So that really creates some nice biology that you can see. So that looks great. And then at this point, we can bring it back in. So then we're just going to flip it and come back out. And before we come back out, what we'll do is I'm going to take this guide out, and we're just going to take a mallet, and we're going to just pound this guide in just a little bit to make sure that we can get our shuttling suture in the correct spot. So what I'll do is I'll hold this guide, we'll come out with the flip cutter, and then we'll bring our shuttling suture directly in. So we're going to bring the lasso directly up through and we've got a good visualization of it uh, coming through. So then we're just going to take a grasper and fish it out the medial portal. Now you have to remember we're going to be passing our sutures through the medial portal. So this is something that I will initially grab through this medial portal. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to bring this over and park it in the other portal. This just does a really nice job, just keeping, keeping things tidy, keeping everything out of our way. So at this point, we can remove the sheath. And we'll just snap these together. And we'll have that for later suture passage. So then at this point, I'll just clean up that remnant a little bit more with our shaver. We'll just make sure that we're getting nice bone contact with our meniscus repair. So that looks great. You can really, I'll just show you where this is coming in. With that point-to-point -point guide, this is just, I mean, it's really dead-on accurate. You can see that's exactly where we'd want to restore the anatomy. So this, this looks great. And you can see the decortication here. So then we'll put our passport cannula in to the anteromedial portal. This is an eight by three passport that for most knees is going to be adequate. And for passage of our sutures, we'll use the knee scorpion. And I think, you know, several advantages I really like with the knee scorpion. So one, obviously it's self-retrieving. The second is that with this needle, you have a very small, you know, perforation into this meniscal tissue. Oftentimes this is degenerative meniscal tissue. We looked at the biomechanics of this several years ago, different stitch configurations, and really found that the, just the simple cinch stitch was the best in terms of ultimate strength, as well as reducing or resisting cyclic displacement with rehabilitation. So we really like the simple cinch sutures with the old fiber link suture. 
So we have our knee scorpion loaded, so we'll just simply introduce our knee scorpion with our O fiber link through our passport cannula. And sometimes it's easy to kind of get around this meniscus, other times it's a little bit down, so what we'll do is we'll just turn that scorpion upside down, and then you can barrel roll to really help placement with the knee scorpion. And we'll just come into a little bit more extension, perfect. So you need just enough room for clearance. So I'll, I'll kind of place that posterior stitch first. Here you get a great view of the trap door and you can see very precise placement. And then one trick I found is that instead of directly coming back through the condyle, if you just kind of come through the notch, you'll have a little bit more clearance, a little bit more chance of that suture retrieving. And then we'll just hold our passport cannula so that stays in. And then with our loop already loaded, you can see this is a, just a very efficient way to pass our sutures and get good control of that meniscus. Typically, if the, if the meniscus quality is good, we'll pass two of these sutures. So now we have our old tiger link that we'll bring in as our second stitch. I think for this one, we'll place it a little bit more here on the inside. We really want a good span between the two. Here we can really have good visualization. Really got captured some good tissue there. And again, with the simple cinch, works really nicely to capture. So now we have both sutures in, really good control of that posterior root. So at this point, we'll grab our wire shuttle that we had parked in our lateral portal. So we'll just take a little retriever, our grasper, and grab it through our passport. And at this point, we can make sure that we have no suture bridge. And we can shuttle transtibially into our socket. So we'll just pull those on through. And then we can directly visualize our tensioning with this root. And the nice thing here is we have only two sutures. With different suture constructs, you might have four suture strands, which are a little bit harder to tension. Here with just two sutures, you can see really great tensioning, a nice anatomic repair back to where we wanted it. So then one thing we did find in our biomechanical studies is that there definitely is some creep or some cyclic displacement. So what I'll do is I'll actually cycle the knee, just holding tension on these sutures from about zero to 90, and I'll do about 10 cycles or so. And then once we are confident, then we'll perform our fixation with our swivel lock on the anteromedial face of the tibia. So we'll typically do this in about 70 degrees of knee flexion. So we'll come in, we just wanna make sure we're distal to our sutures and nice and perpendicular to our tibia. We go down until we have the positive stop. And then we'll load our swivel lock. We'll make sure we have good tension so we can directly visualize the joint as we're doing this. So once we confirm that we have a good direct reduction, then we'll fix it with our swivel lock. And we'll just take a mallet and tap this in. And then I typically will back this up with tying a knot at the swivel lock. I'll make sure that it's low profile. So then when we go back into the joint, we'll just make sure that we really have a nice reduction that you can see here. If we're doing a concomitant procedure, such as an ACL, typically we'll fix the root last once we have the ligament reconstruction complete. But here you can see really a nice anatomic repair you can see our transtibial guide point to point hit our spot. Really nice fixation for this medial meniscus root tear.